Hello, everyone, and again, welcome to today's webinar, Five Key Strategies to Support Your Immune System. We are grateful you have taken time to join us. My name is Alexandra Sislowski, and I'll be your moderator. I have been a member of Pasco Canada's sales department for over two years, and I'm very excited to be hosting today's session. Pasco Canada is the Canadian subsidiary of Pasco headquartered in Gießen, Germany which is a third generation family run manufacturer of natural healthcare products. POSCO Canada is dedicated to bringing our consumers, retail partners and medical community premium natural healthcare products with over 125 years of history. Our products are made in Germany and are carefully harvested by hand from locally sourced natural ingredients. We only use high quality raw materials and when possible, the medicinal plants are cultivated under organic conditions. Pasco's portfolio in Canada includes over 70 products that are herbal, homeopathic, and dietary supplements. Today's webinar is on the five key strategies to support your immune system, presented by registered holistic nutritionist, Sylvia Rocca. We are thrilled to have you join us, Sylvia, and share your expertise on the subject matter. Without further delay, I'd like to welcome our presenter, Sylvia, and turn the time over to you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm Sylvia. Um, I'll be presenting on the, how to, the key strategies to support your immune system. I just wanted to give you a, a quick face um, and um, say hello. OK. So thank you, Alex. Thanks for that introduction. Um, so um, it's such an important topic right now, right? In today's world, uh, the immune system is such a hot topic. Everything that's going on with um, the coronavirus uh, and immune function. So this could not be more relevant than in today's time. So I'm excited to share some health education for you so that you can adopt these key strategies and feel more empowered um, in taking control of your health. So, so uh, the agenda today is I'm going to be talking about what is the immune system, what makes up the immune system, then we'll get into the factors that weaken the immune system, which is really important to know this way that we can prevent um, um, the strategies um, that support your immune system. We'll get into five key areas and um, then we'll have a question and answer period that Alex was mentioning as well. Oops, that's too fast. Uh, the first one, uh, so what is the immune system? So the immune system is really a complex network of cells and proteins that defends the body against infection. Uh, the immune system keeps a record of every germ, also known as a microbe, uh, it, ha it has ever defeated, so that it can recognize and destroy that microbe quickly if it enters the body again. So basically, it stores that into memory. So it's brilliant that way. So once, that's, once it's encountered that microbe, it learns how to defend against that microbe and it stores it into memory so that when that microbe comes back into the body. So your gut wall, also known as, also known as the digestive tract, it houses 70% of the cells that make up your immune system. That being 70% of your immune system lies in our gut. So our gut bacteria plays a crucial role in keeping us healthy. So the key is to have a really good balance of good bacteria over the bad bacteria. So the good bacteria will keep the bad bacteria at bay. It will act as a shield against the bad microbes. Oops. So I uh, just want to take a quick poll before we get started. Uh, how many of you feel that you are in control of your health? So. You can say, yes, you feel in total control. You know what you're doing for the most part. Or do you feel like you're somewhat in control? Like you know a little bit, but there's so much more that you could be learning. Or do you feel like, no, I don't really have a clue <laughs> as to what I can do to kind of, you know, take control of my health. So we're just going to do a quick poll. So do you feel confident in your health education? your skills to keep your body and your immune system strong? Do you know what to do? Do you know what to eat? Do you feel proactive? 
So we're just going to give it a couple of seconds here to get everybody to answer and we'll just tally up the polls. And once the polls are tallied, then we're going to see the results. Okay, great. Okay, so almost a 50-50 split. So a lot of you do feel confident, which is fantastic. 58 is the majority percent feel somewhat in control of their health and 0% is no. Okay, so that's really good. That's um, that's positive. We're going in the right direction. So that's basically the intention of this webinar. It's we're here to empower you with the knowledge so that you can, you know, start the process of building health or building on what you already know by supporting your immune system, your body's natural defense mechanism. Okay, so now we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so um, when we look at factors that weaken your immune system, uh, this is pretty much a short list, but there are other factors that are involved. But um, for one, antibiotics is a big one. It can have a really big impact on the gut's microbiome, uh, which is basically uh, your good and bad bacteria that's in our gut. So when we create an imbalance of the good versus the bad, it creates a state of dysbiosis, which is an imbalance. So antibiotics are really strong. So the idea is that you really want to try to maintain good health so that you can avoid needing antibiotics, right? So you want to use antibiotics as a last defense. Um, and again, the key is focusing on prevention because antibiotics is almost like, you know, placing a bomb on your gut. It destroys the good stuff and it destroys the bad stuff at the same time. So that would be a really big factor in weakening your immune system. Another one would be a refined processed diet. So what I mean by that, um, well, a, first of all, a refined processed diet contributes to a microbial imbalance as well. So things like eating out, eating fast food, convenience foods, foods that are packaged, boxed or prepared. Uh, a lot of these food, foods contain additives. They're not very good quality. They contain preservatives, artificial ingredients. This can all take a toll on the body and on our immune system. So the idea is that we want to eat whole foods instead. And I'll be getting into what that looks like in, um, in future slides. So sugar also competes with nutrients and can suppress the immune system over time. Sugar is very addictive. Many foods have hidden sugars in order to increase flavor. So you really want to opt for natural sweeteners instead, things like um, fruit, maple syrup, or honey. Smoking, as we pretty much all well know, it's, you know, it's not good for us. It's a well-known carcinogen, which meaning it ca causes cancer, and it's the leading cause of disease. So obviously we want to avoid smoking. That uh, is a huge contributor to weakening, weakening our immune system. Uh, alcohol. Alcohol is fine in moderation and in, in frequent, like in moderate amounts and infrequently, but it's excessive alcohol is what we want to try to avoid. That has a huge impact on our immune system as well. Uh, stress, chronic stress. Uh, a little bit of stress, you know, daily stress from here or there is fine. It actually can be serve as a motivator for us to get things done. But chronic stress um, depletes nutrients. So we really want to make sure that we manage our stress. Toxins, um, we want to reduce our toxic load. We do live in a, a toxic world, so it's kind of challenging, right? Uh, we don't live in a bubble, but we can control certain toxins. You know, the toxins in our food, if we choose to opt for organic foods or we grow our own foods. Uh, toxins in our body care, um, our household cleaners. We want to look for natural uh, substitutes instead. Uh, poor quality sleep um, can also contribute. Sleep is a time for recovery. Inadequ inadequate sleep deprives our bodies of the rest and the recovery it needs to stay strong. So sleep is a huge factor as well. Uh, chronic inflammation. Uh, your body is always in defense mode if it's chronically inflamed. Um, acute inflammation is fine. So if you say, for example, you're outside, you're, you know, you're bike riding and you fell, you hit your knee, 
you know, you would you would experience swelling of the knee. So that's just, you know, a short-term inflammation that's there to protect your body. But when your body is in a chronic state of inflammation, that means that your body is always trying to fight something. So that's not a good sign. It's always on high alert. It's always in fight mode. So our body does not want to be in fight mode. It wants to be in balance at all times. So a, a key thing to, to note when we're looking at um, immunity, we would need to talk about inflammation and gut health because those are really prominent factors that, um, that play into part with uh, immunity. So when the immune system fights uh, pathogenic bacteria or viruses, it utilizes many elements in its toolbox to neutralize the problem. So inflammation can either be localized or it could be throughout the body. And it's, it's part of the tools your immune system uses to help fight anything it seems as harmful to you. So too much inflammation, like we talked about, can cause severe damage. So for example, if there's too much inflammation in the lung, breathing can be impaired, which can then be life-threatening. Controlling inflammation is also important. Many people are chronically inflamed. Should they contract a virus or bacterial infection, even more inflammation is going to incur. So increasing the risk of a serious outcome. And in terms of gut health, you know, we were talking about the good bacteria that resides in the gut is a major player for a healthy immune system. So you can't be healthy without a healthy gut. There are foods and supplements that can help. So working with a healthcare practitioner can also help should you need a more comprehensive strategy. Oops. Um, so, what we're going to take in this webinar, we're going to take a comprehensive approach is really needed. Um, supporting our immune system is not about taking one supplement or avoiding certain foods. There really is no quick fix or magic pill to health. It's really about taking, you know, a, a full strategy to provide your body with what it needs to function at its best. So small things really do add up. Things like poor diet, stress, lack of sleep, and too little exercise all have an effect and can lower the body's ability to fight infections and viruses. So along with nutrient-dense foods that can help the immune system to be strong, there are dietary and supplement considerations that we will also be discussing. I know everybody's looking for that big magic pill, right? So the key is there is nothing. There's no one magic fix, you know? It's really about looking at the body as, as a whole and doing, you know, a, um, a variety of strategies together, they work well together to um, support our health and our immune system. Okay, so the first key strategy, we wanna eat a, a balanced whole foods diet because food really is medicine. Um, so you wanna support the health of the immune system and the gut to help lower inflammation with a whole foods diet. So a whole foods diet is defined as a diet that is that is unrefined and unprocessed as much as possible. Like we were talking about, you want it to be free of additives or any other artificial substances. It really is just simple ingredients. Eating foods that are of good quality, grown in rich, naturally fertilized soil. Examples of whole foods would include things like whole grains, tubers, legumes, fruits and veggies, meat, fish, nuts and seeds. Whole foods can be found in nature, you know, in gardens, farmers markets, you know, the perimeter of your grocery store. These are foods that our great grandparents ate, right? These are foods that our bodies recognize. So food really is truly medicine. What we eat has a significant impact on our health because food provides information to our cells. It tells our cells what to do. Ideally, we should be choosing to buy organic, right? Because we want to lower exposure to toxic chemicals so that it could lower inflammation and take some of the pressure off the body and the immune system. So the idea is to do the best that you can. Okay, so uh, part of the foods of a whole foods diet that you wanna include in order to support your immune system is essential fatty acids. These are nutrients that the immune system loves. Essential fatty acids like omega-3 uh, are anti-inflammatory. They help to fight inflammation, basically. So we don't get enough of these foods in our traditional Western diet. And so this list here are some of the foods where you can find omega-3. 
things like chia, flax, and hemp seeds. Um, pretty much every grocery store has these items now. And they're so super easy to um, include in your diet. You can add them, you know, you can top them into your smoothies and drinks, um, you know, on salads, uh, into baking for flax seeds. So super easy. Cold water fish such as salmon and tuna are contain uh, essential fatty acids, grass-fed butter, uh, pastured eggs, raw nuts and seeds. So omega-3, which you've probably heard um, various times, it's pretty it's pretty well um, articled in in uh, in magazines and um, in other great papers. Um, so antioxidants are a great way to support our immune system. Antioxidants are substances that can prevent or slow damage, or sorry, that can prevent or slow the damage to cells caused by free radicals. Free radicals are unstable molecules that the body produces as a reaction to environmental and other pressures. So vitamin A is an antioxidant, uh, and you can vi find vitamin A in these foods here. Uh, things like eggs, grass-fed butter, cod liver oil, sweet potatoes, carrots, tuna squash, spinach, and green leafy vegetables like um, spinach and kale, uh, arugula, uh, things of that nature. So vitamin A is a good source. Vitamin C, we've all probably heard of vitamin C and how good it is for our immune system. Uh, it's another powerful antioxidant. It's one of the biggest immune system supporters. A lack of vitamin C can even make you prone to getting sick. So vitamin C rich foods would include things like citrus fruits, things like lemons, limes, grapefruit, orange, tangerines, and clementines. Uh, things like carrots, kiwi, bell peppers, tomatoes, strawberries, berries, broccoli, and cabbage. So the idea is like you don't, if you're eating a whole food diet, you know, variety is key. You don't have to be strategic in making sure that you're eating all these things, but like as long as you're opting for variety and you're, and you're eating colorful food, you know, good quality, you know, you're, you're going to ensure that you're getting all these nutrients into your diet. Vitamin E is also another antioxidant that supports immune function. It helps to repair damaged cells. Uh, vitamin E rich foods include things like olive oil, avocados, sunflower seeds, walnuts, salmon, uh, turnip greens, and mangoes. These are some of the sources for vitamin E. Uh, another one antioxidant is um, vitamin D. Of course, you can get that from just spending time outside in the sun or from a food source. You're looking at cod liver oil, salmon, mushrooms, and eggs. And as you can see, a lot of these great nutrient-dense foods are rich in several different vitamins, right? That's why we're seeing them repeat in other different in different categories. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with cod liver oil, cod liver oil comes from the liver of cod fishes. So just a note, um, milk or non-dairy milks do contain vitamin D, but they are fortified with vitamin D, meaning that they're not naturally occurring, they've been added to it. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, so zinc, is an important mineral in immune system function. Zinc is an essential mineral that our body cannot make itself. That means that we have to obtain it from our diet or supplements. Studies have shown people who are deficient in zinc are more susceptible to infection. So um, we wanna make sure that we get some of these foods into our diet, things like meats, things like lamb, grass-fed beef, um, if you're choosing to have dairy products included in your diet, then you would opt for things like kefir, yogurt, uh, ricotta cheese, um, lentils and legumes, vegetables like spinach, mushrooms and avocados, oysters, uh, nuts and seeds like sesame seeds and cashews and almonds, uh, chocolate and cocoa are high in zinc, uh, and then we have baker's yeast and brewer's yeast. So vegetarians are at a higher risk of zinc, zinc deficiency because they do not eat seafood or meat. Uh, zinc, contain, zinc contained in grains and plants is not as well absorbed uh, as they are in seafood and meat. So you can minimize these effects by soaking 
heating, sprouting, and even fermenting uh, in order to increase absorption. So basically we want to reach for anti-inflammatory foods. So these are where you can find them. Um, like we talked about the omega-3 rich foods um, are anti-inflammatory, but we, you can also find anti-inflammatory herbs and spices. Um, so let things like turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, garlic, cloves, black pepper, cayenne pepper, sage, rosemary, basil, peppermint, uh, and coriander. Uh, vegetables also have phytonutrients that are anti-inflammatory. Things like broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kale, bok choy, carrots, cauliflower, and asparagus. And then you're also looking at fruits, things like berries, pineapples, papaya, citrus fruits, apples, cherry, avocado. Those are all good sources. And then we also have CBD oil, uh, which is uh, really popular lately. It's extracted from the cannabis plant. It's gained momentum in the health and wellness field for ease of symptoms of chronic pain, arthritis, and anxiety. So I do want to note something. So you want to really avoid food sensitivities. So food sensitivities are different from allergies. Um, it, it causes a delayed response. So for example, if you ate something on a Monday, you may, you know, it, you may see a reaction on a Wednesday. It's not immediate reaction, it has a delayed reaction. So that's why it's kind of hard sometimes to figure out what foods you're sensitive to. So they can also increase inflammation if you are reactive to certain specific foods. Reaction to food is, is an individual thing. The inflammation that a person may experience belongs to the person and not the food. The sensitive food is the symptom and the cause is related to gut health issues. So if you think this, be, this might be an issue for you, you can experiment by removing the food for a couple of weeks and see if you notice a difference. But like I said, it's kind of hard to identify which foods are causing the issue because of that delayed response. So you can also be tested for food sensitivity um, and that is through blood testing. So part of eating a balanced whole foods diet, we want to look at and focus on gut healthy foods. So you've probably heard of probiotic foods before. Um, the simplest way to start supporting your gut is basically by feeding your gut foods, by feeding your gut foods that your gut bacteria love and remove the foods that it doesn't love. So nutrient dense foods basically. So probiotics and or fermented foods contain good gut bacteria that affect both your adrenals, the thyroid, the liver and how your hormones function. So examples of probiotic foods would include uh, cultured vegetables, things like miso, tempeh, sourdough, sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, yogurt, and kombucha. Uh, raw honey also contains 10 strains of good bacteria and it has antimicrobial microbial properties, which we'll be discussing um, in a future slide. So these are all probiotic foods that are great for your health. So if you can incorporate this into your diet, and some of these might, foods might be new to you, you never heard of them before, but um, they're quite popular and they're easy to find in either the health food section of your grocery store or at any health food store. In a lot of workshops now, health, health food workshops are showing people how to ferment their own uh, foods and their own vegetables. So that's really neat. So you can actually do these things at home. Okay, so along with probiotics, you want to make sure that you're eating prebiotics. So prebiotics are a type of fiber that the human body cannot digest. They serve as food for the probiotics, which are the tiny microorganisms. So prebiotics and probiotics both support helpful bacteria and other organisms in the gut. Prebiotics are also found in fermented foods from the previous slide that we were talking about. But basically, if you're eating a healthy diet, your diet is, will be full of prebiotics. But these are just some of the examples. Uh, I'm not sure if you ever heard of Jerusalem artichokes. Um, you'll sometimes find them in the grocery stores and sometimes find them in the health food stores. I think they're quite seasonal. Uh, chicory, things like garlic and onions. Dandelion greens are really bitter. Those are great for you to add in smoothies or in your salads. 
almonds, things like broccoli, cabbage, kale, cauliflower, and asparagus, um, white potatoes and sweet potatoes, legumes, uh, fruits like apples, pears, bananas, and blueberries, and whole grains like brown rice, quinoa, wheat, rice, spelt, and kamut. So in supporting your gut health, um, you really want to make sure that uh, you include these are some of the these are some of the foods that you can include in order to uh, support a healthy gut lining. Uh, so bone broth, colostrum, aloe vera, and collagen. So bone broth bone broth provides amino acids that help the intestinal wall lining. I'm not sure if you ever heard of leaky gut before. It's basically um, gut permeability. So by having bone broth, you know, it uh, helps to um, repair the intestinal wall lining. So you can have it on its own as a drink, uh, which, you know, is effective, but you can also have it in soups. So with other beef bones or chicken bones um, and lots of vegetables, you can just brew that over a few hours and you'll get some really tasty broth. It's full of minerals. Colostrum is uh, the milky fluid that's released by mammals that have recently given birth before breast milk production begins. So supplements are usually made from colostrum of cows, known as bovine colostrum. So that usually is sold in a supplement form. Um, and you can add it to your smoothies. Uh, aloe vera, it's the uh, made from the, it's the gel-like substance found in the aloe plant that can be utilized and you can throw it in um, drinks and smoothies as well too. It's a jelly-like substance. You just would take that and uh, put it in your uh, in your drinks, and it can help decrease irritation in the stomach and in your intestinal health, your intestines. Uh, collagen is quite popular right now. It's a protein that's made from amino acids. Your body makes collagen from eating protein-rich foods uh, like beef, chicken, fish, beans, eggs, and dairy products. It can also be found in supplement form. Uh, through bovine animal sources or through mer marine sources like fish. Okay, so I uh, do want to recognize mushrooms. They are very mighty. They are immune stars. They're, they're antimicrobial and they're anti they have anti-inflammatory properties and they also contain prebiotics. So they're available in fresh and dry form and extract powders can be added to recipes and smoothies or made into teas and supplements. Um, so the type of mushrooms that you might want to look at are things like shiitake, uh, chaga, ch um, chaga, reishi, reishi, turkey tail, lion's mane, uh, maitake, and cordyceps. These are mushrooms that you may or may not have heard of before, but um, you can definitely find them in your health food stores, um, but also I just want to note that you can also have regular mushrooms, you know, things like porcini, button, oyster, portobello, those, those are awesome too. But the ones I listed earlier are more immune stars. So variety is key is here as well too. Okay, so the second... So we we're talking about diet, and now we're on to the second key strategy, which is taking supplements to help your immune system fight pathogens. So um, things like probiotics, we talked about it in the food form, but in supplement form, you can isolate certain strains and increase the dosage in order to reach therapeutic levels. Um, glutamine is a supplement that you can take. It's an amino acid. It helps to heal the gut lining. Plant sterols are found in plants. They can help reduce inflammation, um, typically related to cholesterol levels. And then antimicrobials, uh, things like oregano, aloe vera, grapeseed extract, food grade essential oils like clove, cinnamon, and thyme or lavender. Um, they contain phytochemicals that help the potential to help the immune system fight pathogenic bacteria and viruses. Just want to note that they, um, they help inhibit and not kill bacteria and viruses. They can be useful in helping to eliminate the excess pathogens and uh, they do not harm the good bacteria. So that's a key factor, right? Because they're, they're helping get the bad stuff out without killing the good stuff. Okay, so I um, want to take another poll. Um, probiotics have been 
quite popular um, in recent years. So how many of you have taken probiotics before in a supplement form? So either a yes or a no. Have you taken probiotics before in a supplement form? Just kind of curious. I mean, they're pretty popular, but just wanted to see where this audience is in terms of supplements. So I chose one of the most popular ones, <laughs> which is a probiotic. So we're just waiting for the tally to happen. Now, if you've taken it in a food form, that's awesome too. So I just wanna make note that um, supplements are there to supplement a healthy diet. They're not there to replace a healthy diet. But supplements are, can be a um, helpful tool because they can isolate certain um, active ingredients and then you can reach therapeutic levels. Instead of eating, let's say, you know, a case of yogurt, you can take, you know, a probiotic pill or a capsule. Wow, fantastic. So 73% of the people said yes, and 27% said no. Okay. And it's not that you need to take supplements. You can get all your nutrients from foods, from whole foods. But uh, if you're suffering from a deficiency, supplements can help you fast track. Perfect. Okay, so we'll get to the next slide. So another key strategy is exercise and movement. Uh, exercise improves circulation and allows cells and immune system to function better. Uh, our world today, we're doing a lot of sitting, right, at our jobs. Um, sitting is considered the new smoking because it has the same effects from sitting down all day. So we really want to get up and moving. Our bodies are we're designed to move and not be so sedentary. So things like, you know, it doesn't have to be something really structured like an exercise routine, but you know, it's great if it can be, but it could mean things as simple as going for a walk or a jog, you know, doing yoga or Pilates. Um, and there's so many apps now that you can, that you can utilize or DVDs for exercises at home. You just want to avoid sitting for long periods of time. Uh, you want to aim for maybe 30 minutes of active movement per day. And then if you're doing a lot of sitting, you just wanna get up and move every hour from sitting, right? To kind of shake out your body, move things along. So that is a key component. I don't like to use the word movement because, you know, exercise sometimes sounds so laborious, you know, but you know, our bodies were really designed. That's why we have arms and legs, <laughs> right? We're meant to move, right? So it's important to keep moving throughout the day. And the idea is to find something that you enjoy, that you like, and there's just maybe even pair it up. So if you're going for a walk, maybe you're uh, listening to a podcast, listening to music, or you're taking a walk in nature, something that you enjoy, or you pair it up with a friend, or a lot of companies are doing walking meetings now instead of having sitting meetings. So these are all good strategies to kind of implement into our daily routine. The fourth key strategy is stress management. Probably not a big surprise. Uh, stress can rob the immune system of valuable nutrients. And um, so too much stress can use up valuable nutrients that are needed by the immune system uh, instead of other areas of the body. So it's important to find ways to relax and find calm. So how you can reduce stress by taking regular break, breaks throughout the day. It could be as little as 15 minutes, right? Um, taking a tea break, um, those breaks can make a big difference in terms of reducing stress. Just distracting yourself, maybe watching a favorite movie or something that it, you know brings you pleasure, uh, brings you joy or laughter. Meditation and mindfulness is, are two um, big um, big practices nowadays. Uh, meditation is wonderful and has a lot of science behind it in terms of uh, reducing stress. And mindfulness, just, you know, being in um, 
grounding yourself and being in the present moment, listening to music, singing along, dancing, um, like we were speaking of exercise and movement, just making time for your favorite hobbies. Maybe you're even you're spending time with your favorite people. And you also have the option to take an adrenal supplement that can help your body manage the, uh, the stress, the effects of stress on, on your body. So stress is really a key component. It's easier said than done, right? But it really becomes a practice um, or it is a practice, I should say. Another key strategy is making sleep a priority. Um, the immune system needs the time you sleep to repair and regenerate itself. It's a time of healing. Making sleep a priority is a smart strategy. And these are just a few suggestions. So you can lower your stress during the day like we just spoke about. You can go to bed at the same time every night because um, this way your body gets into a sleep-wake cycle and it's on a routine. You can create a proper sleep environment, right? Maybe uh, things that make you feel relaxed, um, avoiding caffeine or eating a large meal close to bedtime can interrupt sleep. Disconnecting from electronics an hour before bedtime is a great idea because the light and electronics in general would just stimulate our brain and just it, it the signals our brain to stay awake versus getting into a sleepy mode. Uh, you can consider taking a herbal supplement or a tea to kind of get you in that sleepy mode. Um, these are just some suggestions to make sleep a priority. See, I always found that. Um, you know, if we if you need an alarm clock to wake up, that means you're not getting enough sleep. We should really be using an alarm clock to actually go to bed, to remind ourselves to go to bed. So you want to aim for about seven to nine hours of sleep per night um, for adults. Typically, children and adolescents need more. Um, but yeah, making sleep a priority is um, is a great strategy to um, support your immune system. So overall, health is wealth. Uh, the key is making your health a priority. Again, taking a comprehensive approach versus a quick fix um, and prevention is key. You know, and not to, say, not to strive for perfection, but you know, do the best that you can, as often as you can, um, and make yourself a priority. Once we, you know, we do all these strategies, or these are just some five key strategies, but You'll start to see an improvement in your health. You'll start, your energy will increase. Your body will have the nutrients that it needs to fight off infections. Although nothing is a guarantee, but we wanna kind of you know, stack the odds in our favor. So I hope you found this information helpful and I hope you feel a little bit more armed with information to uh, take control of your health. So I appreciate you all being here and now I'm gonna pass it on to uh, Alex. Thank you so much, Sylvia, for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us today. I hope you all found the presentation as educational and informative as I did. Before we start the live question and answer session, I would like to highlight two possible remedies that help support your immune system. Pascalucine Drops has been on the market for more than 60 years and is made with the powerful combination of echinacea and several other active ingredients that ensure effective relief from the cold and flu. Pascalucine can be taken at the beginning of the cold and flu season or at the first signs and symptoms of illness. It can also be used in times of stress, when other family members are ill, or when there is high amount of illness in the general community. Pascalucine Drops offers immediate and effective relief of symptoms such as cough, sore throat, exhaustion, headache, or fever, to name a few. For adults and children over the age of 12, you would simply dilute the drops into a glass of water. The next product I would like to share from Pasco is Pascalucine Ampules or Pascalucine Fort. They are drinkable ampules that are effective remedy to prevent, treat, and relieve symptoms due to colds and flus. 
made again with echinacea and other powerful herbs that kill infection, Pascalucine fort can be taken as soon as the first signs of the cold or flu or appear. This homeopathic remedy can also be taken as a preventative measure to avoid contracting the common cold or influenza. Prevention against colds and flus can also help protect against more serious respiratory conditions like, like bronchitis or pneumonia. Pascalucine fort are easy to take. For adults and children over the age of 12, you would simply break open the ampule and drink the contents, one each day for the duration of the package. We would like to start the question and answer session. If you do have any questions for Sylvia and would like to join our discussion, please type them into the question box. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> we have the first question from Jennifer Sylvia. Okay. Are there any specific herbs that you recommend to support the immune system? Um, so yeah, so basically we're, that was in the presentation as well. Um, so things like echinacea would be great, um, helps to support um, colds and flus. Um, let me just go back to my slide so I can get, I can reference that in just a second. Well, I'm just trying to find it actually here, but it was things like, you know, uh, herbs and like turmeric, cinnamon, clove, um, ginger. Um, those are herbs that you can use again, like echinacea, even herbal teas, um, marshmallow root. Um, if you're looking in a tea, in a tea, in a tea format, you can, some teas are blended. So they have a combination of different herbs together to support the immune system. Um, and then again, the herbs that are in the Pasco Lucene that you were mentioning, Alex, um, that could help as well too, so support your immune system. Right, right, yep. Echinacea, <clears throat> it has been used for hundreds of years for medicinal purposes and mainly to combat uh, symptoms of cold and flu. The next question we have is from Lori. Uh, she asks, for individuals who follow a vegetarian or vegan diet, uh, what would be your top three recommendations to support their immune system? So again, it's, it goes back in terms of foods. It's, it's basically you can still follow a whole foods diet. You just, you're not getting it from, you know, meat and fish. Um, so you're still getting it from nuts and seeds, like you're getting your protein. For vegans especially, you just want to make sure you're getting adequate, adequate protein. Um, lack of sufficient protein will um, impact your immune system. For vegetarians, you have a little bit more option, um, but you can still get it from, you know, beans and lentils. Um, it's really just adopting a whole foods diet, even, even though it may be a little bit more limited. Um, it's, it's the unrefined and the unprocessed that makes the, mo the biggest difference. Great. Um, I do have a question from Mary. Uh, how do we know if we have inflammation in our body? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you can do it through blood work if you're working with a health healthcare practitioner. Um, inflammation can show up in different ways. So like joint inflammation, aches and pains, uh, fatigue, um, if you're having, if you have any kind of uh, metabolic issues like diabetes, cholesterol, um, hypertension that acts as inflammation, inflammation in the skin, you know, if you're experiencing skin irritation, hives, rashes, eczema, that's also inflammation. Um, if you're just, if you're not feeling well, inflammation is usually at the core of it. So um, again, working with a healthcare practitioner, you can go through the symptoms. They'll do a symptomatic questionnaire with you. You can do blood work with your doctor. Um, so there's a few key areas that you can look at, but usually it's symptomatic. You can usually see it in some form. And if not, you can get your blood work tested for that. 
wonderful. I'm just waiting to see if we do have any more questions here for Sylvia. Give it a few more seconds. Well, it looks like we've answered everyone's question today. If you do have any further questions, please contact seminars at pasco.ca. So thank you again to everyone who has joined us and participated in the webinar. A uh, special thank you to Sylvia for her wonderful presentation. Again, if you have any questions about the information presented in today's webinar, please contact seminars at pasco.ca. We will also be sharing this recording on our website at pasco.ca under the webinars tab, and it will be posted one day from now. In recognition of the time you have invested attending our webinar, we will be emailing participants a 20% discount and free shipping code for all PASCO products, valid until May 20th, 2020. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us. We look forward to providing you more educational webinars in the future, and we hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you so much.